Shatramshayaya vido natritam mahatma Brahma drugujita patham narakati lipsu Udanti asavavani kantakamu graviryas Tri sapta kritva urudhara para svadena Shatram shayaya vidon pabritam mahatma Brahma drugujita patam narakati lipsu Udanti asavabani kantakam ukraviryas Tri sapta kritva urudhara parasa vadena Shri 
Kshatram, the royal order, Shoyaya, for the sake of diminishing, Vidina, by destination, Upabritam, increased in proportion, Mahatma, the Lord in the form of the great sage Parashurama, Brahmadruk, the ultimate truth in Brahman, Ujitapatham, those who have given up the path of the absolute truth, Naraka Arti Lipshu, desires to suffer pain in hell, Udhanti, is exacts. Asau, all those. Avani Kantakam, forms of the world. Ugravirya, awfully powerful. Tri Satta, thrice seven times. Kritvaha, performed. Urudhara, very sharp. Parashvadena, by, by the great Chapa. Translation and purport. When the ruling administrators, who are known as the Kshatriyas, turn astray from the path of the absolute truth, being desirous to suffer in hell, the Lord, in his incarnation as the sage Parashurama, uprooted those unwanted kings, who appeared as the forms of the earth. Thus, he thrice seven times uprooted the Kshatriyas with his keenly sharp chopper. Please repeat. When the ruling administrators, who are known as the Kshatriyas, turned astray from the path of the Absolute Truth, being desirous to suffer in hell, the Lord, in His incarnation as the sage Parashurama, uprooted those unwanted kings who appeared as the fawns of the earth. He does fries seven times uprooted the Kshatriyas with his keenly sharpened chopper. The Kshatriyas or the ruling administrators of any part of the universe, either on this planet or any other planets, are factually the representatives of the almighty personality of Godhead and they are meant to lead the subjects towards the path of God-realization. Every state and its administrators, regardless of the nature of the administration, monarchy or democracy, ob uh, oligarchy or dictatorship or autocracy, have the prime respon responsibility to lead the citizens toward God-realization. This is essential for all human beings and it is the duty of the father, spiritual master and ultimately the state to take up the responsibility of leading the citizens towards the end. The whole creation of material existence is made for this purpose, just to give a chance to the fallen souls who rebelled against the will of the Supreme Father and thus, become, thus became conditioned by material nature. The force of material nature gradually leads one to a hellish condition of perpetual pains and miseries. Those going against the prescribed rules and regulations of conditional life are called Brahmojita Pathas, or persons going against the path of the absolute truth, and they are liable to be punished 
Lord Parashuram, the incarnation of the personality of Godhead, appeared in such a state of worldly affairs and killed all the miscreants, kings, twenty-one times. Many Kshatriya kings fled from India to other parts of the world at that time, and according to the authority of the Mahabharat, the kings of Egypt originally migrated from India because of Parashuram's program of chastisement. The kings or administrators are sim similarly chastised in all circumstances whenever they become godless and plan a godless civilization. That is the order of the Almighty. I'll read the verse again. When the ruling administrators, who are known as the Kshatriyas, turned astray from the path of the Absolute Truth, being desirous to suffer in hell, the Lord in his incarnation as a sage Parashuram uprooted those unwanted kings who appeared as the fawns of the earth. Thus he thrice seven times uprooted the Kshatriyas with his keenly sharp chopper. Parashuram, Shakya Veda Avatar, a very powerful incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, interestingly, he came as a great Rishi. So he, uh, he was a Brahmin and a Kshatriya in one personality. And he had a particular purpose, as Srila Prabhupada explains in this verse and purport, uh, that um, whenever there is a decline in religious principles, uh, Krishna, in some form, had as a Mahabhagavata Acharya, a great personality, Shakyaveta Avatar, or directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead in one of his avatars. It is Yuga Avatar, Lila Avatar. Uh, ultimately they came to pre-establish Dharma, Sanatan Dharma. And Parashuram has uh, the power of Viga as the most perfected Kshatriya and he is one of the authors of Kshatriya Dharma and great personalities I worship Parashuram Parashuram was the the ultimate worshipable personality for the Kshatriyas the noble Kshatriyas You can see that even before the battlefield of Kurukshetra, great personalities on both sides, they acknowledged and admired the prowess of Parashuram. Of course, uh, the saintly personalities, they were aware of his position as a Shakya Veta Avatar to come to assist the various pastimes of the Lord, even Karna, who was a great personality, son of Queen Kunti, who was uh, desirous to learn in the military martial arts of uh, secrets of Parashuram, who had a f famous axe. Parashuram means Rama with the axe. <laughs> very, very fearful. At the same time, he was famous, reputed to have a peaceful disposition. He was a great Brahmin. Um, um, according to Puranic text, he's still present on the planet Earth. He's meditating in the Himalayas. And he created the lake called Renuka, his mother's lake. Very beautiful place. I have a, I have a nice photograph of Lake Renu Renuka. Um, as you know, the pastimes of uh, Parashuram are very, very instructive and um, very um, uh, unless we understand who he is it, it's actually very very 
aggress aggressive personality, like a Kshatriya. Uh, although he, he had a mission, of course his aggression was uh, purely motivated. He chastised the Kshatriyas. And his father, Jamadagni, who was a great personality, great Brahmin himself, he was very absorbed in worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he secured all auspicious items. He had a cow named Surabi. And his wife, Renuka, very, very chaste, very pure, very example, exemplary um, uh, queen, who worshipped and served her husband faithfully. And one time, Jamadagni requested his wife to uh, collect clay from, from a holy river. And while she was away, she got distracted by the Gandharvas, the beautiful features of Gandharvas. So she temporarily, momentarily got bewildered by this attraction. Um, Jamadagni was impatient, where is she? And by his mystic power, by his mystic vision, he could detect where she is and realize that she got distracted. Of course, in, 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 in those times, in Satcha Yuga and Trecha Yuga, the atmosphere was very pure. Even subtle fall down was a great sin. And Jamadagni was very disappointed by Renuka and wanted to chastise his own wife. Just to show example, the king's, uh, one of the most important principles is to set example and rule the world righteously, ethically, morally, with religious codes. And they were, the up, uh, they were upholding the, the Kshatriya Dharma, Sanatan Dharma, protecting the Brahmins, protecting the citizens. They were the representatives of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as Śrīla Prabhupāda says in this particular purport that uh, all representatives, all government leaders are meant to represent the Supreme Will, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unfortunately, due to the contaminated age, um, the do not understand that they have an important task or role, therefore they're misusing their powerful position as leaders of countries, nations, and we can see Kali Yuga is a classic demonstration of uh, uh, godless civilization, godless governments, which cause only pain and anxiety to the citizens of the land, citizens of the whole world actually. Um, they constantly quarrel and fight amongst themselves. And there's another good example of um, uh, a compromised Kshatriya was King Vena. King Vena misused his position, terrorized the citizens of the land. Of course, these are examples for us to understand and analyze the current situations, why they are so compromised. And nevertheless, King Jamadagni was a powerful Raja Rishi who was also a Brahmin, Kshatriya. Uh, his wife was a saintly personality, Renuka, but somehow or other she got distracted. To, sh to show example what is Dharma, what is the Sanatan Dharma, what are the occupations and the duties of different personalities, uh, Jamadagni wanted to chastise his own wife. Therefore, um, he called his sons, he had seven sons, seven great rishis, and one of the rishis were Parashurama. Uh, Parashurama was away at that time, so the, he requested his six sons to find Renuka and kill her. So very brutal punishment. Of course, we have to understand the context, it shouldn't be taken out of context. <laughs> And so, um, but the sons, they were uh, bewildered by their father. My dear father, 
how can uh, you're very important for us you are dear father the supreme king of this land Bharat Vash you are expecting us to kill our mother she's just as dear to us of course Jamadagni was very upset you disobedient sons you see, you can see the Kshatriya mood chastisement very very quickly responding the Brahmanas are much more thoughtful and uh, uh, introspective they, they, before they say anything do anything they are very uh, analyzing the situation the Kshatriyas often they react very quickly responsive which was a natural trend or quality of a kshatriya. They, they, they're ready to chastise. Um, so he cursed his six sons. You become stone. So they all became stones in that moment. He had so, so powerful, so much mystic cities he had. We can see that in Trecha Yuga they were very powerful. The Brahmins and the Kshatriyas, they have powers. They have astras, weapons from higher regions, heavenly regions. And um, so they were, they meant aggression. If they were aggressive, they were powerful. And Parashuram, just about arriving, and he was astonished to see his brothers turn into stones, statues, and he inquired from his father what happened and the father said the disobedient sons I punished them now I want you to find your mother and kill her and Parashuram again oh my dear father um, I can't do that but, and father said you'll be another stone and Parashuram thinking very clearly <laughs> what to do <laughs> I'll be another stone six stones <laughs> uh, statue standing there unmovable and he was thinking obviously he was the most intelligent <laughs> alright I do whatever you say my dear father I, I remain a very loyal obedient son so he went back to the river found his mother and the mother realized her sin Oh, there was no sin, but she was very humble and chaste. She got temporarily distracted by the beauty of the Gandharvas. Um, and Parashuram said, my father instructed to kill you, please forgive me, my dear mother. And Parashuram had similar qualities as Jamadagni, Brahmana and Kshatriya in one body, very powerful, not to speak of the, uh, the Shakyaveta avatar an incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Renuka agreed, all right, kill me then. And Parashuram uh, cut her head off with, with his sword. And Parashuram uh, begged forgiveness of the Almighty Creator. Please forgive me, I just follow the order of my father. So he went back to his father and the father was very pleased. I can see, you are the only son. <laughs> very obedient. Therefore, I give you two boons. And I promise I'll f I uh, make it happen. And Parashuna, I'm <laughs> very intelligent. All right. Bring my, me and my brothers back alive. <laughs> and my mother also, that's the second. <laughs> so. Jamadagni was surprised. Oh, definitely you're the best son. You're the most intelligent. So, by his mystic power, Mother Renuka, she came back alive. And the six sons, the brothers, they came back alive. So, uh, this is a very beautiful story, Jamadagni's power and potency. And the great son Parashuram, such a powerful Kshatriya, he was not sentimental with the disobedience. He was acting. And, and Prabhupada says, very in, in this particular purport, that all right, these are all classics and great examples, but the leaders of countries, they should take up the mood of a saintly Kshatriya, Raja Rishi, 
take guidance from saintly personalities and guide righteously, ethically, keep peace and happiness in this world. If they do not, they're creating hellish conditions, hellish consequences, while on the earth, while on the earth and after life also. You can see the modern leaders of societies, they don't have this clear understanding, they don't know or not aware nor want to know that they're supposed to represent the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, later on, there was a king in the kingdom, another king called Kata Virya Juna. It's a long name. <laughs> And he visited King Jamadagni, and Jamadagni fed him very nicely with his uh, uh, servants. And uh, Kartavirja Arjuna was very pleased with the service and wanted to know how could you supply all my, all my, whole, my whole of my army and Jamadagni said, I have a beautiful cow, Surabi cow, who is the source of all goodness, supplies everything for saintly personalities. And of course, um, the king, Kartavi Arjuna, uh, was very impressed and he devised a plan. I want to take this cow away. So he requested the king, give me this cow. And of course, uh, Jamadagni refused uh, respectfully my dear king, I know you're a great personality, but I need this car for my puja. Nevertheless, later on he um, managed to steal the cow <laughs> and cause a confrontation with Jamadagni to the point that he killed Jamadagni. So you can see that sometimes kings, if they don't get their kshatriyas, they, they fight amongst themselves which is a problem sometimes for the great Raja Rishis because they're seeing all the kingdoms. That's why you see in Mahabharata, Yudhisthira, not to speak of Parikshit Maharaj, Prithu Maharaj, they're making sure there's law and order. The kings within the, uh, the empire, Maharajas, small kingdoms, and they had to get along. If they're not, they were often given the land outside of Bharatwaj. And they were given a suitable land or sometimes we were defeated. Not for the sake, not for the sake of conquer, uh, conquering, but for the sake of Dharma, for the benefit of all those kingdoms and kings, because they were fighting on themselves. So sometimes a Raja Rishi, the great Raja Rishi, stepped in and created peace. Um, when Parashuram heard that his father was killed, he was extremely angry. Parashuram, with the X, <laughs> the transcendental X, incredible power. The whole world feeling the strength of Parashuram, great Shaktyaveta avatar. This is when his Kshatriya nature came out. And he captured Kartavirja Arjuna and he killed him with his X. And he killed all his followers. All the Kshatriya kings were trying to fight him, but he killed them all. Not only once, 21 times. And some who surrendered, he chased them away. Often he gave them a land outside of Bharat. Go to Egypt. Uh, some say, some commentators say, I think they, they got some place in Europe also. And of course, uh, the, the European migration, the Aryan migration, was uh, going different times also, not just at Parashuram. But Parashuram um, chased many of the Kshatriya kings away, all given the land outside of Bharat. Um, they were very fearful of Kshatriya Parashuram, so they escaped or chased away, or worse, got killed, of course. Um, therefore, the European uh, mm, cultures, they had a very deep Aryan, Aryan connection. Even uh, uh, modern scientists, researchers, they, they see the DNA 
the languages, Indo-European languages, Indo-European languages. So the European cultures, European tribes who were migrating out of the Asian subcontinent gradually, gradually settled in European uh, subcontinent. Uh, they had this Kshatriya blood in them, warrior type. Uh, said the Egyptian, you can see the connection somehow or other, the, the, the way they did things, the conqueror's nature. Uh, look at, uh, looking at our modern history, the conqueror's nature of the European uh, empires. You can see the German Empire, Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, Austro-Hungarian Empire, British Empire. Spanish Empire, you can see the conqueror's nature, Kshatriya you know, tendencies, and often um, because in Kali Yuga it's all corrupted, they didn't have the purity or the saintliness, they were just conquering for the sake of conquering, after gold, after land. Uh, so you can see, uh, going back to the uh, Chacha Yuga, back to very old times where Parashuram, the great kings, were chasing these rebellious offensive Kshatriyas who didn't obey, didn't follow the codes of Dharma, Kshatriya Dharma. Uh, Parashuram was a great teacher and you can see that great personalities even in the Mahabharata they approached him learning the art, learning the uh, military Karna, Karna also approached him, as I said, and Karna was pretending to be a Brahmana. I'm a Brahmana, please teach me all these secrets of military science. Danur Veda, the weapons, the astras, and how to use the sword, and the axe. And of, course, of course, Karna was uh, preparing for a big battle. He was very much uh, motivated to learn. Being a Kshatriya, Kshatriyas are very de uh, desirous to learn the art. Therefore, they seek out a teacher. Like, for example, Dronacharya for Arjuna and the Pandavas. They were very powerful. Dronacharya was very powerful. He was a Brahman also in Kshatriya. So Parashuram was a very powerful personality. Um, I think even, uh, as I know, even Sukracharya worship. Um, uh, Parashuram. Am I right, Maharaja? Yeah. So we can see the position of Parashuram. Even the, the, the guru of the Asuras worshipped Parashuram for power. So Karna was pretending to be a Brahmana and he was fanning his guru Maharaj, Parashuram. And Parashuram wanted to take rest. I like to take rest. And, and Karna said, please not, not to take rest on the ground. Put your head on my lap and I'll keep fanning you. And what happened, a spider came on the leg of um, Karna and bit him and was bleeding. And he didn't say anything. He just tolerated, he didn't want to interrupt the service, uh, fanning Parashuram. He was so tolerant. You can see uh, Karna was very powerful also, very tolerant. Wow. And then the blood touched the cheek of Parashuram and he woke up. What's happened? And then he got very angry, as usual. <laughs> you lied to me. You're not a, you're not a Brahmana. You're a Kshatriya. Because you could tolerate, only a Kshatriya can tolerate this. A Brahma, <laughs> only a Kshatriya can tolerate this kind of thing, bitten by a spider, and you're not interrupting your service. Of course, he was very pleased at the same time because you know he was very tolerant, Titikshava, tolerant. But nevertheless, because he lied to him, he he gave him a, a boon because he he was a good student, a noble character, but also very upset. So he cursed him that. Although you will be respected as a noble Kshatriya, you have so many good qualities, but when you need the power, what you learn from me, the secrets, when you really need it to defend yourself or to accomplish your goals, you, you, you forget it. You have a black art, you forget the art. And of course, uh, Kana was very sad. 
but he offered his respect and he went. Modern leaders, as Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, they should take uh, inspiration for these great personalities, not imitating, but great personalities, how to lead a country, how to lead the world, how to stop corruption. Uh, and and Srila Prabhupada says in the purport here, the kings or administrators are similarly chastised in all circumstances whenever they become godless and plan a godless civilization. This is the order of the Almighty. Um, you can see, it's not just at the time of Parashuram or great Raja Rishis, but even now, even if there's no great saintly king, then the laws of karma, the karmic destiny will chastise them. They'll, 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 um, they get their punishment. Because the leaders of the land, the leaders of the country, whoever they are, democratic state or monarchy, or they should take responsibility, they should take responsibility for every citizen of the land. Then they can rule peacefully, and people uh, feel that the king is ethical, follow moral principles, they're representing the supreme almighty personality, the supreme personality of Godhead. So this is the uh, proper way to lead and govern the whole world. When you representing the message of Godhead, uh, the Dharma, and people respect that. So Kshatriya is supposed to be saintly, Raja Rishi. Uh, later on, Parashuram made a nice lake uh, for the memory of his mother. And there's a mountain, I forgot the name of that mountain. Uh, yes, Mahindra. Uh, where Parashuram is still there in transcendental meditation, very deep meditation. And Lake Renuka, it just happened to be there in a high altitude. Not a large lake, but there's a mountain uh, cliff mountain peak and he's supposed to meditate there. So Parashuram is still present on the earthly planet in Bharat Vash. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So this is what I can say about this purport and verse and whatever came into my mind. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Is there any questions? Uh, or comments? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This um, Parashuram is um, one of my, in my readings, all the old Kshatriyas, is my hero. <laughs> I was even given the Parashuram Shalagam Shila. <laughs> Amazing. How could the Shalagam do acts everything? Many years ago, someone gave me. And Shiva Ram Maharaj gave me a Varaha Shila also. So Parashuram is always my focus of meditation, beautiful pastimes. And um, when I, interestingly, <laughs> when I got this play <laughs> and very interesting, um, um, very interesting thing happened. It's not for my own, own glorification, but uh, this is my birthday today. And I didn't realize the verse is 22nd also. 22nd, <laughs> and Parashuram, my favorite, my favorite. <laughs> and I said, wow, <laughs> it's pure happiness for me, really. Parashuram is really um, um, my hero. <laughs> and everything, like, I don't know, it could be some con connection from the past lives, but right in the early, early years, I was at naturally attracted to it. So the pastimes really stand out for me, Parashuram. Some reason, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so thank you, Karikish.